Well, good afternoon. We're going to come back to the little kids um, storybook, Veggie Tales, that has a little bit of Bible truth in it. Well, a lot actually, but they're little stories that um, take vegetable products to tell stories. So there's a tomato and a cucumber. You got to love a cucumber who can play guitar with no hands. It says, hi, everybody. Just because I get a little grumpy listening to what we have learned after every show, Larry told me that I don't appreciate music. <sighs> he really hurt my feelings. Sure, he said he was sorry. And I'm just supposed to forgive and forget? Well, no way, bucko. I should have my cowboy hat. Now Larry wants me to hear a story. Well, being the reasonable tomato that I am, I'll oblige. So the story is going to be called Larry's Lagoon. Oh, do we know what a lagoon is? Hmm. The clue is in the picture I just showed you. <laughs> a lagoon is a body of water. <clears throat> The brochure didn't say anything about this. Now, one summer, Bob and Larry set sail on a three-hour tour with a millionaire, his wife, and a professor Bob. And a professor, period. Bob was the skipper and Larry was the first mate. But when Bob left the helm to check on their passengers, Larry crushed the boat into a big rock. The five castaways made it to shore, but now they were marooned on a desert island. You smashed our boat, said Bob. Yes. What do you have to say for yourself? asked Lovey, the millionaire's wife. That night, as they laid in their newly constructed huts, Larry took a deep breath of the night air and said, Gee, Bob, maybe this isn't so bad after all. Not bad, Larry. We're stuck on this island and we have no way of to get home. I said I was sorry, said Larry. Well, that's just not good enough. Larry was very sad. He means I'm not good enough. I bet they'd be happier if I just left. So, we most certainly had an accident and someone... Had some explaining to do. A three-hour tour. Oh, you recognize that song? Yeah. That's from a black and white TV show from when I was a kid called Gilligan's Island. On with the story. Here, oh, this is a cute picture. The next morning, the millionaire and lovey saw the skipper up in a tree. Has anyone seen Larry? Bob asked. When I woke up, he was gone. Suddenly, the professor burst in to the clearing with a giant bamboo catapult. If we wind it up and pull this cord, it will fling us back home. Well, that sounds like a solution, doesn't it? He showed the castaways what he had made. Spoil yo 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 a coconut shot into the air, knocked Bob out of the tree, and they both crashed to the roof of the millionaire's hut. Mm. I'm sorry, said the professor. Can you forgive me? It was an accident, the skipper said. I forgive you. Then the skipper apologized to Lovey and the millionaire, too. We know you didn't mean to do it, said Lovey. We forgive you. So there's Skipper Bob up in the tree, and there's the professor. Oh my goodness, he looks familiar. And there's the millionaire couple. Yeah. So let's see what happens. It says over here, in love, we can forgive. It's the only way to live. Oh, that rhymes. In love, we can forgive. It is the only way to live. That's pretty cool. So, I'll show you the picture first. 
Yes, little Bob. Boy, if I said I was sorry for doing something wrong and people still wouldn't forgive me, I'd feel terrible, he said. Then they realized they hadn't forgiven Larry when he said he was sorry. They ran down to the lagoon and found Larry floating away on a tiny raft. You guys just don't like me anymore, so I'm going to leave. But we do like you, said the millionaire, and we forgive you for smashing the boat, added Lovey. Everybody makes mistakes, the skipper said. The skipper said, We were wrong not to forgive you when you said you were sorry. Oh, I forgive you guys, said Larry. Wubba wubba. It was the professor in a bamboo helicopter. Climb aboard, said the professor. Everyone was glad to be going home. They were also happy they had learned a great lesson about forgiveness, too. Obey God and see that we can live in harmony. He, <laughs> another mind. Obey God and see that we can live in harmony. That's a good song. So the Bible story is going to come from the prodigal son. You probably know that story. I bet a lot of you do. God sent Jesus to forgive our sins, right? Yep. And if God can forgive us, hello, we should be able to forgive each other. Check out the story Jesus told. Jesus said there was a man who had two sons. The younger son said, Father, Father. Father, give me my share of the family property. So the father divided his property and money between his two sons. The, oh, there's an ambulance. Say a prayer. The younger son packed up all he had and left for a country far away. There he wasted his money on wild living. He spent everything he had. Then the whole country ran low on food, so the son didn't have what he needed. He went to work for someone who sent him to the fields to feed the pigs. The son wanted to fill his stomach with food, with the food the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. Then, then he began to think clearly again. He said, <clears throat> Well, here I am dying from hunger. I will get up and go back to my father. I will say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and I have sinned against you. I am no longer fit to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired workers. While the son was a, still a long way off, his father saw him. He was filled with tender love for his son. I'm just going to stop there. As we come back out of our little places where we've been for weeks, I just want to remind you to be tender-hearted towards people. People have been through a lot, and we don't know what everybody's been through, and we don't know every man's heart. We don't know their circumstances. So let's be really tender-hearted and forgiving, and when we speak to one, one another, even if we disagree, we can talk to each other with respect and with love. And you can state what you think, and the other person can state what they think without being mean and without being degrading and saying, calling people bad names. Okay? Okay? All right. So, because the father was filled with tender love for his son, just like our father is filled with tender love for us, there's the camera. Um, guess what the father did? You think he was mad at him for being foolish? Well, apparently, maybe he felt that, but you know what he did? He ran to his son. He loved him so much. He ran to him. He threw his arms around him and he kissed him. The son said to him, Father, 
I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer fit to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Let's have a big dinner and celebrate. This son of mine was dead, and now he is alive again. He was lost, and now he is found. Woohoo! That's like us. Our father knew we were lost, and he came after us and found us, and has been blessing us. So, also, be grateful today. All right, so that's the end of the story. Larry, where are you? Come on now, I forgive you. I really, really do. You told me you were sorry, and I should have forgiven you. You're my best buddy. I do all sorts of things wrong, too. I'm sure happy when I'm forgiven. And now I hope you'll forgive me for not forgiving you. I sure am glad that God forgives all of us. After all, God made you special, and he loves you very much. So there they are. And what do you suppose it says at the end of the show on the computer? Well, it's a Bible verse, and it's from Matthew, which is the first book in the New Testament, the, one of the Gospels. Matthew was a tax collector, and he wasn't very well liked. And at first the disciples were like, Jesus, what are you thinking? Having this sinner tax guy with us. And you know what? Jesus loved him. And he drew him to himself. And he forgave him. And, he, and Matthew, Matthew's life was changed by Jesus. So in Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew 18.22, it says, um, they were talking about, well, you know, how many times should I forgive? The di disciples were asking this. It's like, you know, once, twice. And what if they do it like a fourth or fifth time? Why do they call me a bad name like six times in a row? Guess what Jesus says? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but forgive 70 times seven. Okay, those of you math wizards, you know that's a lot. Now, I'm not really a math wizard. I'm a musician, so I count mostly to four sometimes to 12. Mm. And, you know, I definitely, um, you know, I could do that math, but so could you. I'm also not a tech genius, as you guys are figuring out. Yeah. So, forgive me for forgetting to look at the camera. <laughs> All right. That's that story. Pretty cool, huh? All right. This was one I didn't read. On Easter. Okay. Have a good day.